We humans spend about one third of our lives sleeping. That's our little tidbit to celebrate World Sleep Day, which falls today. With World Sleep Day, the World Sleep Society wants to prevent and manage sleep disorders while highlighting issues related to sleep. So this is our reminder, get a good night's sleep. Welcome to Prime Brew Kaleidoscope with me, Savitri Rodrigo. Hold your breath in for a moment. Find your calm. This is the Green Embassy Homagama. Invest just 3 million rupees to reserve 0710 Prime Lands Residencies, PLC. This week, our dose of positive, daring, different is very exciting. We discuss what's beyond the free float, our IWD focus on women and tea, Outlook 2022, and stylish market bags. So if you like our show, subscribe and follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. Welcoming all of you with warmth and care. Commercial Bank. Our interest is in you. Here's a quick look at the week that was on Commercial Bank Snapshot. Tourism earnings topped 500 million US dollars for the first two months. Between March 9th and 14th, in just five days, Sri Lanka sold 152 million US dollars worth of development bonds. Sri Lanka ended her single digit interest rate era as the average lending rate jumped above 10%. With the dollar rising and rupee depreciating, air travel has become prohibitive, with ticket prices flying up by more than 25%. And credit cards, temporary overdrafts, and pawning will have higher interest rates on transactions. In the USA, a baby born with single ventricle heart disease got the world's first heart and thymus transplant. This bright rainbow-colored fish, the rose-veiled fairy wrasse, has been seen for the very first time deep beneath the waves around the Maldives. Endangered Hills horseshoe bat, which has not been seen in 40 years, has been spotted in Rwanda. A group of adventurers brought a new meaning to high tea when they had a tea party at over 21,000 feet on Mount Everest. Welcoming all of you with warmth and care. Commercial Bank. Our interest is in you. Welcome, you're watching Commercial Bank News Capsule. Sri Lanka free floated the Lankan rupee last week, although the move is almost too late. Economist and co-founder for Centre for a Smart Future, Anushka Vijayasinghe, states there will need to be a reckoning of costs imposed and the lasting economic impact of the previous approach. The move itself is seen as an effort to prevent a further crisis rather than a fast-seeing policy fix. Anushka, what would you recommend in terms of a credible and convincing macro framework? It's important that we look beyond this recent rupee float because that was simply to try and prevent any further crisis uh, and undoing of a mistake, if you will, not so much a forward-looking policy fix. Moving forward, we have to immediately reintroduce the fuel pricing formula, raise policy rates, which are currently at negative real interest rates because inflation is at about 15%, and consolidate the budget. Uh, on this last point, you know, any other time I can understand the apprehension to go in for an IMF program because of the in inevitable belt tightening, expenditure rationalization and austerity measures that would be recommended and the government not wanting to do that. But here we are, where all of these things are happening already, even without an IMF program. So why not just go in for a holistic program of reform that takes the necessary steps towards macro stability? and begins to build up investor confidence. Uh, on this, I mean, the, the idea that we can do this alone with so-called homegrown solutions is a fallacy and frankly, false bravado. We are a relatively small economy, uh, part of a larger global financial and trading system. The, uh, to my mind, the only aspect of a plan that should be homegrown 
should be the part where we consider the pain being endured in homes right now. School children having to study by candlelight, um, small shops having to throw away spoiled produce, um, daily wage earners unable to come to work because of fewer buses and so on. We have to take measures that make sense in the large scheme of things and set us on the right path. The Colombo stock market didn't have a good week, with turnover plunging as macro crises kept investors away. This week, the old share price index had its ups and downs, but remained at the same levels as last week. The average daily turnover dropped to below 3 billion rupees towards the end of the week. The possibility of Iranian oil returning to global markets and the reappearance of COVID-19 in China, stoking fears that Chinese demand for oil will drop, saw WTI oil prices tumble by 20%, from the recent highs of 123.70 US dollars per barrel to below 98 US dollars. Gold prices are under pressure temporarily at 1,916 US dollars per ounce as high inflationary trends and potential onset of stagflation continue to persist. 2022 is thought to be a year that will be a challenge to forecast given much of the local and global risk. The Ceylon Chamber of Commerce recently launched its seventh consecutive outlook report, which looks at growth reverting to pre-pandemic levels of about 2-3% to this year, leading to the expectation of an economy driven by slowdown in consumption. Giving a quick look at the outlook report is Chief Economist of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, Shiran Fernando. Uh, the inflation story will play out uh, further in, in 2022 with high levels, double-digit levels of inflation for most months during uh, 2022 and I think it will only ease out towards the end of the year as well. Uh, in this period, um, uh, there will be a rising rate environment and I think businesses and, and the public uh, uh, could expect higher interest rates uh, by, the end of, uh, by the end of this year. The uncertainty, however, is how Sri Lanka will be able to manage its debt obligations and refinancing and we expect um, some level of um, uh, exchange rate uh, depreciation to take place this year uh, while there should be um, some level of debt restructuring that takes place under an IMF program as well. Um, while these are the domestic factors, the global factors are the biggest risk. Global interest rates are rising as well as some of the tensions that are taking place in particular uh, with the ongoing Ukraine-Russia crisis as well. And these might have a uh, further impact on things like inflation for Sri Lanka going forward. Placing the spotlight on fast depleting marine life is this hauntingly beautiful underwater park in Cyprus, housing 93 artworks which will eventually become food and shelter for marine life. A 50-year-old farmer in India has invented a tree scooter, a scooter which climbs trees to harvest eureka nuts. Too old to climb trees, he invented this scooter and has now sold over 300 of them. Hold your breath in for a moment. Find your calm. This is the Green Embassy Homagama. Invest just 3 million rupees to reserve 0710 Prime Lands Residencies, PLC. Now here's the perfect gift for all bookworms and progressing readers out there. Sanjeev Jairatnam Speed Reading is a worthwhile program that can be joined from absolutely anywhere in the world. Just let us know and you'll be gifted a free speed reading program. World of risks and obstacles, we are there to help you reach your goals. With 12 billion rupees worth of customer benefits in 2020 and a life insurance fund worth over 100 billion rupees, our strength is your strength. You focus on your goals, we will take care of the risks. Selenko Life. Sri Lanka's tea industry is one of the world's largest tea producers. The tea industry, just like apparel and migrant workers, relies chiefly on a female workforce. These three industries remain the largest foreign exchange contributors to the country's economy. Women make up the majority of the industry and yet, despite their contribution, these female workers who build up the backbone of the tea industry have often been relegated to the bottom strata and considered an abundant and cheap labour force. Today, the women workers of the tea industry are tasked with overcoming deeply ingrained gender norms, gender segregation and gender divisions of labour. 
Here to shed light on the situation of these women is Dr. Roshan Rajdure, Managing Director of Haley's Plantations. Welcome Roshan to Selling a Life. Let's start. Just want to know how many women are actually working in the industry and in what roles are they in? In the organized sector, that is a corporate sector, we have 1 million residents who live on the estates. Of that, currently 57% of them are females. And if you look at the smallholder sector that provides 75% of our national green leaf, predominantly, I would say about 80% of them are women. So of the 80% of these women, am I correct in saying that the majority of them are in the bottom rung of the industry? Most of them are employed as pluckers and factory workers who are our factory sergeant. Generally, very few women in the factories, but predominantly in the field, harvesting tea or even tapping rubber. So do they have any hopes of moving up in a career? Because of the lower educational level compared to lower, although we promote education, the education level generally is about up to O level. So with that kind of uh, educational background, the opportunities for them to advance to a very higher echelons is uh, less. But nevertheless, now with the opening of the education system and mass media, we have bright children who have ended up as doctors, lawyers and other professions. So there is opportunity, but comparatively, the window of opportunity is lower and lesser for them compared to the other segments of our society. If we are looking at the future, where do you see these women? Where do they go beyond this? Generally, the men employment is about 50% of the men available for work are reporting for work. But you see that about 70 to 80% of the women work uh, in maintaining their families, in sustaining the family uh, economic uh, drive. And apart from that, we see a peculiar situation in the plantation. It's a male-dominated, hierarchical and very patrimonial uh, society. Of course, that is a legacy that, has, that we inherit. And we are doing a lot of things to educate them uh, and make the male folk aware of the value and the worth of their female folk. And I think we have made significant progress in that along with other NGOs. And we have something called the Plantation Human Development Trust, whose intervention is very vital. So we have made long strides in that journey. We have changed a lot of uh, traditional roles like if in the past, the chief clerks or administrative officers were exclusively male. Now females are, I believe, are the majority who take over that role. Very important function. Then the factories, when you say factory officer or team maker, traditionally it's a male role, but we have several female factory officers. Then you know, human relations, the EMAs, the buyers, the sellers, the brokers, the testers, women are in every sphere of our industry. That's good to know. So I hope we see more and more of them, not just at the, in the plantations, but you know, across the board. Yeah. Thank you, Roshan. Thank you very much. It is a hard and difficult road for the women already in the industry. Socio-cultural norms keep them shackled and I really don't see them making any inroads upwards. But hopefully, we will see the next generation adding value in the various roles the tea industry offers. Who would have thought that simple market bags could be turned into works of art? Well, that is exactly what Vanessa Silvaratnam did. She transformed reed bags or pung bags into aesthetic and fashionable pieces anyone would love to carry. Here's Vanessa Selvaratnam with Vanessa's creations on Life is 60. Vanessa, I am looking at these bags and thinking, what a lot of work has gone into this. How did you start? Well, during the Corona season, uh, I was doing my pots. I do pots as well, clay pots. And I had a couple of bags at home, so I tried them out. And um, well, they came out okay and my my biggest supporters were my three kids and my good friend Kolu and Preeti Fernando and then they supported me they said Vanessa keep doing this these are marvelous so I kept doing a couple of bags which my friends bought and it went into a little business now have you always been creative yes since I was a young girl I have been doing these creative stuff and where do you source your stuff from from way well then yeah the the local people they weave these bags, these are really reed bags. Each and every stone or bead that is done, is done by me, personally done by me, each bag. 
Until we are back next Friday, we remember World Sleep Day on our Kaleidoscope Takeaway. Sleep is the best meditation.